Copy data activity in Marx Fabric Pipelines is the most essential activity to learn. Don't worry if you haven't yet learned how to use this activity, since in this video I will give you a walkthrough how that activity works, and then we are going to have two hands-on tutorials to enhance your learning process. Let's get started. Welcome to the video, my name is Alexia and on this channel I cover Marx, Azure and Fabric related topics. In this video we are continuing our Marx Fabric data engineering journey and covering copy data activity in Marx Fabric pipelines. That is one of the most used, if not the most used activity in Marx Fabric pipelines. This video is also part of my Marx Fabric data engineering series, where I have already covered one leg and different data stores in Marx Fabric, and I have also gone through an introduction to Marx Fabric pipeline tool. If you want to check out those videos, link to the playlist can be found in the description below. But now let's cover the copy data activity in the pipeline tool. Here on the screen we can see how copy data activity looks in the pipeline UI. Let's first talk about the purpose of the copy data activity, which is, as the name implies, copy data from place A to B. In the context of copy data activity, place A is called source and place B is called destination. Let's dive a bit deeper into these sources and destinations in copy data activity. With copy data activity, data engineers can move data between two data stores. These data stores could be fabric data stores like data warehouses, lake houses or KQL databases. Or they could be some external data stores and systems from which the data is copied from or copied to. This makes copy data an excellent data integration tool for many different scenarios. Copy data activity can copy data in binary format, which means that it can move data without caring what type of data it contains. So this means that copy data can basically copy all types of data when using binary copy setting, since it treats those files as binary blocks without reading the actual data inside the file. You can think of these cases like copying just some files on your local computer from one folder to another. And of course there is a possibility to copy those files and leave the original files to the source, or delete the source files after the copy has been executed successfully. Also, when copying files, a file format can be specified, which then opens up more options in the copy data activity. For files, copy data supports using many of the most common text-based file types, like CSVs or more correctly said delimited text files and JSON and XML files. Also, some more advanced file types are supported as well, like Parquet, Org, Avro and even Excel files. For destination side, some of the same file types are supported, but now the selection is narrowed a bit since copy data does not support writing data to some file types that are available in the source side, like XML and Excel files. Also, when we expand our sources and destinations from files to fabrics data stores and external systems and data stores, we get even more possibilities to use the copy data activity. As you can probably guess, the copy data activity can transform the data format when copying the data. For example, copy data from on-premises SQL server table to delta table in Fabrics Lakehouse or vice versa. Basically, you are able to mix and match these sources and destinations however you like and is needed for your purposes. Even though copy data is not really a data transformation tool and there are way better tools in Fabric for that purpose like data flows and notebooks, it still has some limited data transformation capabilities. Like discussed, copy data allows you to change the data format, for example, from a flat file to a delta table. Also, copy data allows you to change column names and data types by using the mapping feature. Now let's hop into Fabric and let's do two tutorials using copy data activity. Also, all the files that I will be using in the following demo slash tutorials can be found by clicking the link in the description. But before we open up Fabric, I would like you to know that I spent ton of my free time creating these videos for you. And that's why I would like you to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more Fabric data engineering content. It doesn't cost you anything and I would highly appreciate that. But now let's go to Fabric. Before we start to build our pipeline, let's check out our lake house first, where I have created two folders under the file section called Fabric DE Series 4 Source and Destination. In the source folder, I have one file called movies.csv. We can preview the file contents by clicking this file and see that there is a header and three rows that contain data. 
our destination folder is empty and now we would like to copy this file to our destination folder using copy data activity in pipelines. Next, let's hit the create button on the sidebar and create a new data pipeline. Then we have to give a name to our pipeline using our naming conventions. This then loads up the pipeline development view. Here we want to continue by adding one pipeline activity to our pipeline that will be copy data activity. Now we have our actual pipeline development canvas open and we can start to configure our copy data activity. First, let's name our copy data activity to copy data movies binary. After this, we can start to configure our source tab. We want to use our workspace data stores and then we want our data store type to be lake house. Then we have to find our desired lake house from the list of available lake houses in our workspace. Next, we want to change our root folder to be files, since now we are copying files from one folder to another. Then we can click this browse button and navigate to our source folder and select our movies.csv file there and then click OK. Then we can leave file format as binary since now we want to move this file as binary block and not care about the file contents during this first tutorial. Under the advanced settings, we have few more settings that we could use. The most important of these settings is to delete files after completion. If we would tap this setting, the file would be deleted after the copy has run, but for now we don't want to delete the original source file. Next, we can proceed to configure the destination for our copy data activity. We want again to use our workspace data store and use lakehouse as the data store type and then select our desired lakehouse from the list of lakehouses in our workspace. Then let's select files as our root folder and next we can use the browse to select the our destination folder. Since our destination folder is empty and there are no files to choose from, we can just click OK after clicking our destination folder. Then to the file name field, we can type the file name that we want to use for our copied file. I'll write here movies underscore copied dot CSV. And again, we want to use binary as our file format. Also for destination, we have some advanced settings that are irrelevant for this tutorial, but here we could do some optimizations for our copy activity and add some metadata to the copied files. But now we should be done with our configuration and we can try to run this pipeline and see what happens. Let's first click the validate button to see that we have configured everything correctly. It seems that everything is okay from the configuration perspective. Next, we can try to run our pipeline, which will then ask us to save our pipeline before we run it. And then we can click this save and run button to do that. This will save our pipeline and trigger a pipeline run for this pipeline. Here in the output tab, we can see that our pipeline ran fine. By clicking our activity name in the output, we can get more information about the run and we can see that one file was read and one file was written, which was the purpose of this exercise. Next, we can navigate back to our lake house and check out that we have that movies file in our destination folder. And here we have it, so everything went as we wanted and configured. Next, let's do another tutorial, but now I would like to copy the contents of the movies.csv file to a table in our lake house. We can see that we don't have any tables in our lake house yet, but we can actually use the copy data activity to create that table for us when we copy data there. Now let's create a new pipeline and again name that pipeline according to our naming conventions. Also, this time we want to just add a copy data activity to this pipeline. Let's name our copy data activity to something that describes what's happening, like copy data movie CSV to LH table. Then we have to start from our source tab and choose our lake house to be the source for our copy. Again, we want to use the lakehouse file section and then navigate to our file. The first thing that we are going to do differently this time is to change the file format to delimited text. Then we could click the settings button next to the format to configure our delimited text settings. Here we could change things like row and column delimiters and encodings and so on. But for now, I know that my files follows these default settings, so we can leave them as default. 
Because we are now reading the contents of the file, we have this preview button available next to our file path and we can click that. This then loads a preview of the file and shows that how the data would look in a table format when using the settings that we have defined for delimited text. Here we can see that the data looks good, so we are done with our source configuration. Now we can move to the destination configuration. Here again we will select our lake house to be the destination for our copy. However, now we are going to use the tables as the root folder and then write the table name here that we want data to be copied into. I'm going to name our table just as movies. Under the advanced section we can choose if we want our copy data to append the data to the table or just overwrite it with a new data. Since we don't have a table there yet, there is no need to append the data and we can just select the overwrite option. Now we are done with our destination configuration. Next, let's open the mapping section where we can do some light data transformation. Here we can click import schemas that will import our columns from our source and destination, so we are able to do some changes if we want. Since we are using CSV data that doesn't have any data types, all our columns are now strings and they are going to delta table to string columns that have also a string data type. Here we could rename our columns for our destination, that we are not going to do now, but if you remember our rating column is actually a decimal column and we could change the type for that to some numeric type that has decimals like decimal, double or float. Let's just use float for now without diving deeper into differences between these data types. Now we are done with our configuration and we can click validate button to see that everything is configured correctly. And after that we can click run and that will save our pipeline. Now we have to wait for our pipeline to run and then we can observe what happened and did everything went as planned. Now our copy data has done its things and we can click the activity name in the output to see more information. Now we can see that one file and three rows were read from the source and one file and three rows were written to the destination, which seems to be correct. Next, let's open the lake house and navigate to the table section where we can see our movies table. By clicking the table, we can open up the table data preview that will take a moment to load up. There we can see that our data looks good in our table, so everything went as planned. Now you should have a basic understanding how copy data works and how you can use it to copy different types of data. If you like to continue learning more about Fabric, check out this video next. Now I thank you for watching and see you in that video.